Melissa, I'm finally getting sick. I think this is the first time this year, which is I, I feel like a good run if I only get sick like once in a year. Right. That's that's pretty uh-huh. d- 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 decent. Um, but I woke up this morning with a cough. Just a just uh-huh. a, 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 ever so slightly small one. I could feel it right in like the top of my chest. I had some some mucus in my lungs. And then I, t- I took a shot of uh, Dayquil, which, by the way, they say is non-drowsy, but that is not true. That is entirely false. <laughs> How do you know you weren't just already tired? How do you know it's Dayquil's <laughs> fault? Because I got more tired when I took it. <laughs> you should have mixed it with something. I don't think you're supposed to drink Dayquil straight. <laughs> Dayquil, neat. <laughs> Dayquil on the rocks. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> but that's what I did. Dayquil, neat, single shot. Um, <laughs> I mean, that like that's that like, they're like that big. It's the size of a shot glass. It's I terrible. Um, but yeah, I, I I ended up taking a nap, and when I woke up from that nap, it was like, oh, that cough is is here it's it's not just a little small thing that i feel in the, in the back uh-huh. of my th- <laughs> i wrote i'm sick i'm getting sick it sucks uh-huh. melissa how are you <laughs> i'm fine uh, i'm not i think i'm okay no you've got me paranoid we're not even in the same state but no, i'm worried that karmically i will catch this somehow it is that time of year for sure uh, my partner was sick a couple weeks ago, and I was kind of su- surprised, like I, that I d- did not start displaying symptoms. Um, but I I held off long enough to continue to have my Thanksgiving vacation and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So that worked out just perfect. How was that so. for you? Oh man, uh, I have some. I I, I have a story to share. About I, that. <laughs> you, you did write on our docket earlier today, Thanksgiving break. And then Period. I saw just before I sat yeah. down that you added to it, Thanksgiving break, parentheses, nightmare. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I went to Wyoming to visit my parents. My girlfriend accompanied me. This was her first time out there. Her first time seeing big mountains. Uh, and stuff like that. And uh, we, we had a blast. Uh, I introduced my parents to the bear. Be- 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 uh, we watched ah. all of season one, uh, to which after we completed it, my dad promptly said, so I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I introduced them to Formula One. We got to mm-hmm. uh, I did my second time watching uh, the the Las Vegas Grand Prix. Apparently, my aunt and uh, uncle had were at Vegas like the week before, not knowing what was uh-huh. happening. And so, like, everything was shut down because they were making the track and like they couldn't like go up the strip because they had it all b- blocked off. And so th- they, ha- they had been planning this track trip for a couple years and just didn't know anything about formula one coming (laughs) so uh but my my entire time in wyoming was very nice very lovely but we had like a panic attack right before we went uh so uh, the house that i live in we have we've had a consistent plumbing problem where dirt and sewage will wash back up into the tub uh, every so often. Um, And we've put in, like, multiple maintenance requests. We've had one plumber just kind of be like, well, it's going to happen, like, every Mm. six to eight months. Uh, And then we had another plumber eventually come in and be like, Oh, I I know exactly what is ha- happens. Like you have a pipe that shattered. We need to replace the whole pipe. Right. Uh, here's what like, and they dug up our whole backyard. They replaced the pipe. 
Uh, and literally the day before we were about to fly out, uh, this was like Tuesday, like early afternoon, 1 p.m. It happens again. Oh. Dirt and sewage washes back up into the tub. And at, at first it, it was just a small bit. So I was like, all right, I'm like it. It's it seems like it's not much. I'll clean it up. Hopefully we're we're g g g g good. I'm not even going to tell my girl our end because that will just completely worry her like all of the, that, that stuff. So I started to clean it up. And maybe five minutes after it happens again and it happens more and it happens worse. And the tub is like slowly starting to fill up Ooh. with dirty water. The toilets are clogged. Uh, they're leaking from the bottom. It's just a nightmare. Ah. I'm, I'm just like, oh, no, this is like the worst thing that can happen. Like I fly out in the morning. Uh, mm -hmm. What are we going to do? So, yeah, we thought, like, are we going to have to, like, cancel our plans or do anything like that and just stay, stay, stay here? Uh, so I put in our maintenance re request, immediately left a comment on, on it because we have an app that we can do all uh -huh. of this st stuff in. And uh, immediately left a comment when I saw like this, the, the tub was starting to fill up. Uh, so it was not a like, well, I guess we can just shut the door to the bathroom and leave it for a couple of days. <laughs> like, that's not going to happen. <laughs> like, uh, we can't do that. Um, and d shortly after, I was like, I, I, I just need to call. I, I finally to told mm. Rachel because uh, she also gets the notifications when we leave comments and stuff like that. So it was just like, so uh, don't panic, but here's what's happening. Um, and so I finally called and was like, look, I know it's the holidays. I, I know this is like a super busy time of year for plumbers. Uh, we're about to leave on vacation tomorrow. Is there any way that I can bump this up on your guys' radar and get this fixed today? Um, and uh, the the guy on the phone, I would say, is was super nice, but I didn't talk with him long. You could just hear him go, "Oh no, oh no, <laughs> oh no!" <laughs> just just this, this this repeated like, "Oh no!" Um, and so he eventually was like, "Let me reach out to someone." And then like five minutes after our plumbers called and was like, we're just making sure you guys will be there to like today. We're sending someone out right now. Uh, so thankfully they came. They fixed it. Crisis averted. But this was like <gasps> panic attack right before the, we fly. Mm. The worst, the worst possible thing uh, that could ha happen right before you go on vacation. So. Oh, that's been that's been my week. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hopefully yours was not as uh, panic inducing. No, I I had some coworkers over on Sunday for a little Friendsgiving, I suppose. Sure. And I did a lot for that. I did. <laughs> I did like a very deep clean on my apartment. I made sure everything was like poised and neat. I cooked so much stuff. I set out like every silverware and every plate and here's all the napkins. Like I really made it like a little dinner party. That's cool. So that was the thing I was worried about this weekend. Do you ever expect you're going to have company over and you clean everything and you're like disappointed when somebody doesn't need to go to the bathroom because you're like, but I cleaned the bathroom. The bathroom's <laughs> ready <it>. for you. <laughs> <laughs> nobody wants to sit on the couch and look at my dvd collection it's no, ready okay i have a book of villain layers i do <laughs> <laughs> i've made my apartment into some sort of weird curio museum they talked about the giant spoon which is really notable cool uh <laughs> but i'm like you gotta get out of this mindset like this isn't a museum you're not a curator you can't be like, come look at my exhibit of Criterion Blu-rays. <laughs> I I feel like I have freed myself from that scenario to a certain degree. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I think if you have pe people coming over, yes, you should clean up. 
right? Like, make your house look presentable. But I, I guess I'm of the mind that you don't always need to go, like, like super deep clean everything. Because literally everyone has that same anxiety when people are coming to their house but when you go to their house you're just like oh it's fine you didn't have to do all of that it's just me right like it and everyone has that same thought and that same interaction and so yes i will clean up but i i'm not i'm not gonna like scrub the base boards and make sure like every inch of the house has been dusted or stuff like that the pillows might be all th thrown about still on the couch because the couch is exactly that it's supposed to be a couch it's supposed to be used and look comfy like if it's so pristine i'm i'm always like well i'm not i'm not supposed to sit in that that's the like that's the that's the looking couch you don't <laughs> sit in, in that one right yeah, i understand yes yeah you know how rich white people always have that like uh, that second living room that you don't actually yes. live in yes the 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 dead room as i like to call it because it's just like it's it's fancier couches That's it's like true. Your nicer tea sets and you don't go in there the dogs aren't allowed up on those ca ca couches right you don't hang out there there's no tv what do you yes. do what what is it I, what is the pre what's the purpose <laughs> it's i know exactly what you're talking about my aunt has a room like that and it's just her and her husband they don't have any children they both have had these long military careers so they have yeah. this front sitting room that you don't sit in and that's full of like very heavy and important looking like military awards and like sure. curios from world travel like there's stuff she's brought back from the philippines in there yeah and it, like and, and like i it's it's totally fine to have like a library or a, a trophy room where you can put all your paraphernalia <laughs> right all of your like nerd <laughs> stuff or the awards you want or who knows what but I do like you saying trophy trophy room and pointing to your power rangers helmet <laughs> yeah right <laughs> in your street sharks <laughs> <laughs> my trophies um right but, but like when it gets to the point where you don't use it you don't enter that room you don't hang out in there it's just like what why what, what what's what's the purpose i don't know um so that's, this will be that's why i consider myself to be like a read like i i will clean up but i right i don't need to go to the nines to do all of that stuff we're all people you know, <laughs> maybe, hopefully. I I take the the pristine tone of my work home with me, especially when my coworkers are coming to visit me. I'm like, I got to be the same Melissa from the office with the immaculate spreadsheets. <laughs> it's like, wow, no wonder she did it as her spreadsheets like this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to know what the what the bathroom looks like that might make me go do something about else about or organizing my bookshelf i don't know <laughs> <laughs> very neatly organized bathroom there you go uh welcome to episode 260 <laughs> of the whatnots captain's log my name is kyle springer i'm joined by melissa wilkinson melissa i've yeah. i've made an upgrade in my life yeah I'm living that tablet life. Yeah. Oh, it's purple. We got a purple case. Purple. I have like a little <laughs> cyberpunk style lock screen. All of sorts course. of stuff. Um, I yeah, I I finally was like, I'm going to do the research to actually get myself a tablet that I will only use for comics. Um, Thank goodness. This is long made. phone. It makes me anxious that you've been reading comics on your phone panel by panel. I've Basically. been worried about your eyes. Thank you for taking <laughs> this weight off my shoulders. <laughs> so at one point I did have a laptop 
that had the thing where you could like fold the screen all the way back and it was a like you could use it in a tablet mode but it, it like it's instead of just lifting a small little tablet it was a whole like chunky ass laptop so it was just it was mm. way too heavy it was way too big it was just not not the right thing um that was the the laptop that i got for free a uh, number of years ago um anyways but uh yeah i had been basically reading comics on my iphone for years and just turning it horizontal so i could scroll the page <laughs> um and then every once in a while zooming in when it was like ah, oh, it's a double page spread i now have to like zoom in and do all of that but uh i got myself a samsung galaxy tab eight i believe yes eight nice eight eight, eight, eight. i don't rem remember their whole naming convention um but yeah, I just I got I got their smallest, cheapest one because I'm not really going to be using it for anything else besides like reading. Yeah, same. So, yeah, I'm just, I was just like, I'm going to get the smallest one, the cheapest one, and it is working perfect. Um, so I, I think I made a good, good choice, but it feels good to be be living that tablet life, you know? Thank goodness. Indeed. What what one do you have? Because you, you got one a couple years ago or a year ago or so. I got uh, one version of the Amazon Fire tablet because mm. it's built for reading. It's not really built for other tablet activities. I'm like, perfect. Right, I'm just yeah. going to read comics on this. And uh, I've got YouTube. It, it, Comicsology and YouTube are all I have used it for. There you go. Yeah. Um, speaking of comiXology, I should say this, uh, they are sunsetting that app. Finally, uh, Amazon bought up comiXology mm. a long, long time ago. Oh, OK. Uh, or a couple years ago now, I should say. And they've been slowly but surely integrating everyone into the a Amazon side of things as well as Kindle. Um, so OK, just. Now you can use the Kindle app to look at all of your books. The same, all of your comics. So Kindle is what you do to make fire. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Really just put that um, together. <laughs> and and it's it, it's a book app and not a dating app like Tinder. <laughs> my my when, yeah, when, yeah, when I, right? that should also be books. Right. Or like my so when I I used to live in Texas, I spent like a year, year and a half out there and I worked for a web developer um, and it, we went to I forget why we were there, but we went to San Antonio for like a work trip, like a weekend work retreat, something, something. Mm -hmm. And um I, I remember on the car, he it, like on the car ride the, the day or we were ta ta talking about ideas for apps and stuff like that. And somehow we got on to dating apps. And then in the middle of our conversation, he, he goes, and why the fuck is it called Tinder? I don't understand. Like what? And I, I like I had to like stop and just be like it. T Tinder, you were trying to find a match fire you're trying to light a spark the tinder and he goes yeah don't get get it <laughs> i was just like oh come on what am i doing <laughs> lighting my dates on fire like some sort of wicker man wicker lady? man seeks wicker lady w m l w w <laughs> Wicker man for wicker woman. <laughs> so there you go. That's that's a lot of the stuff that I've been up to recently with all, all my stuff. Upgrading to that tablet life on vacation, Good. having a nightmare right before 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 I go on vacation. Oh, man. Melissa, did you watch? Yeah, go ahead. 
Did you watch any of the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade? I did, actually. Good. Uh, I ended up catching most of it, uh, caught it like halfway through at first, and then it was on repeat on some other channel or something. So caught the start um, there. And yes, I did get to see the Good Burger Mobile. Yes. (laughs) Highlight. (laughs) Also, one of the marching bands played Jimmy Buffett's Cheeseburger in Paradise. That was another great moment. They sure did. And of course, I got to see the Harlem Globetrotters once again. <laughs> I know! <laughs> Your oldest friends. Yeah. <laughs> that's the guy. That's him. He's the one that gave me the double cotton candy. No, <laughs> that's not what happened. But yeah. Yeah. Did 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 you watch it then? I'm assuming. The whole thing. It's. I love that Thanksgiving is a TV based holiday. Mm. Like there's plenty of Christmas movies that you'll watch, but there's mm-hmm. not one specific thing on one specific date and time that everybody tunes in and watches. Everybody generally watches the Grinch, but they might not all catch the same airing of the Grinch or they're watching basketball. Right. Cause there's sports on still or. Mm. Yeah, you put on a movie instead of watching something that's live. Mm hmm. So love the TV makes it very cozy. TV good. TV fun. TV, TV good. Cozy. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of t- TV. I, I, I guess I'll start. I, I, I was about to say, Melissa, what have you been watching? And they looked at your list and it's all movies. <laughs> okay, if you yeah, if you have a TV show, you may go first. Uh, did have have you heard of Hit Monkey? Yes, Marvel's Hit Monkey over on Hulu. I M- Monkey that Hit Man. Yes, yes, yeah. Um, I I finally started watching that because I was just like, well, it's Marvel. I'll check it out. I, here I am sitting in my What If shirt and my Avengers hat. Um. Right. Like I just like, all right, I'll 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 see what this is, because they really didn't have like any advertising for this show. Didn't really know what it was exactly. And uh, it is an interesting show. I don't know if I would say it's a good one, Mm -hmm. but I'm kind of fascinated what they did with it. Let me at least explain what happens in the pilot for this okay. one so it starts you. out you you follow the uh this hitman who gets hired to kill a up-and-coming uh politician in japan when he carries out the deed the people that ha- ha- hired him also then try to pin it on on him they try and have their cake and eat it too um and so he escapes into the mountains uh he's hurt and almost in like a, a an a, a iron fist t- t- type of way, he collapses way up in these mountains uh, and he's mm-hmm. like adopted by this group of monkeys that are out there. I'm not sure what kind of <laughs> monkey it is, but yeah, he's like brought into their camp nurse back to health. Um, and a couple of days later, the people that were were after this hit me and send a group of soldiers up into the mountains to finally k- 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 kill him. And they do. And then all the monkeys are, are like, what the hell? You're in our territory. I should say it's also snowy up in these mountains. Yes. And they're in the like hot, sp- hot, sp- 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 rings and stuff like that so all the monkeys are throwing snowballs and rocks at these soldiers and then the soldiers open fire on all these monkeys and the lone survivor of these monkeys picks up the remaining guns that the hitman had and kills all of the soldiers and then wanders down into tokyo to find his revenge and that is hit monkey but let me add this He's also seeing the ghost of the hitman himself. Uh, he's just kind of like tagging along for the ride. Gotta here have a bit. mentor. Right. You have to have like your in character that can actually talk mm. be- because hit monkey is I- exactly that. He's a monkey. He's not a man okay. that was turned into a monkey or any- anything like that. Yes. I have a question. Big question. So what I was imagining 
is he's just a monkey and it's normal. You remember those segments on Dexter's laboratory with dial M for monkey with the monkey special agent. And there's not, yes. it's almost like he's a man, but he's just a monkey. I was picturing that. So like, are there other animals that do things in this world? Cause I was picturing it's just no. an animal who does stuff. So <laughs> there's not also yeah. like an alligator who's an accountant or whatever. There's no. one monkey who became a hitman. So not only are all these people, why would a monkey pick up a gun? A monkey already has such so, an ability to kill. We've all seen Nope. Yeah, right. Yeah. So to give a little bit more context, this particular monkey, when when you're first in the, the most of the pilot you spend with that hit man there as he's like enacting his assassination and like the 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 time when when you get like introduced to this monkey and hit monkey is like the last 10 minutes of the uh, <laughs> pilot. So it, it feels like a bait and switch that they do here. Mm -hmm. But. In that 10 minutes, you learn that the leader of the monkeys is kind of an old school by the books, real conservative, like doesn't really want to change the ways. Yes, the, the, there's a whole like political aspect to these monkeys. And he's and he's just like, no, we need to adapt and change like global warming is happening. Like we're, we're not going to be able to stay here much longer. All of that stuff. Um and eventually that monkey gets like exiled. He gets like kicked out. Um, but he's the one that notices the soldiers coming up the mountain to do all of this. So he's like trying to rush back to his camp to warn them that people are coming. Uh, and he's kind of too late. And that's why he picks up the guns that the one hitman had and then kills them. But yeah, it's not like the world is filled with other animals that do stuff like that or it was a result of like he, he got bit by a radioactive monkey and now he is hit monkey <laughs> right like it's 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 not yes. that he he's just a monkey he he he, he can't speak <laughs> he has no psychic powers it, like nothing he understands nothing uh and and so that that's why they have to have this like ghost of the hit man like always there haunting him to be the like in character who can talk and like kind of explain like no we need to like figure out where this guy lives and pick up his uh his wallet there so we can get his ad jarass and stuff like that he's That's wearing it. a little a suit, suit mm -hmm. and little sunglasses again Monkey don't need these. Monkey, monkey come down see, the mountain. Monkey do. Monkey. He see Hitman. He do Hitman. Right? You're like, I can do that. So is this a child suit? Where does he get the suit? It is a child suit. Yeah. Oh, what, what is the child going to do without their suit? He was I have rich. A lot of questions. He was in the Yakuza. Or his family was in the Yakuza. <laughs> okay, he's, so. he's, he's wearing some Yakuza prince's wardrobe. Okay. Right, yeah. It's just, it's it's really ridiculous. Like, I I, I didn't really like the bait and switch. I kind of I gotta prefer to, like, stay with the monkeys. And then all of a sudden, oh. this hitman kind of wanders in and disrupts things here. Like, that. I, I feel like that would have been a little more in interesting. Um, but the... The hitman himself just won't shut up. He is talking the entire time. And it, it's animated in a way that's kind of similar to the way Archer is animated. Okay. Like you can see it's like digitally designed characters that are then kind of puppeteered on like certain angles and stuff with the mm -hmm. way that they move here. Uh and that doesn't really make for great, like fast action. It's a little bit choppy. Um, and so I'm, I'm not a huge fan of it at times. It's OK, uh, but uh, yeah, not, not a huge fan of the animation. Uh, but then they. They they're almost on to something, though, because it's not as like I, I would absolutely describe this as adult animation. And. 
kind of almost what you think would be the like stereotypical adult animation with the like hitman being the like this guy won't shut up he sounds like a frat boy he's jaw ranking he's the one that's like trying to make jokes constantly mm. uh and it's not really working and the, the times that it is working is when they're actually taking it a little more seriously and finding the ridiculousness in that but it's just it's a monkey in a suit killing people right like that's ridiculous on its own um and it, yeah it's 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 fascinating it's only 10 episodes it got canceled it like after after that first season so it's just an odd thing that exists <laughs> um, I'm, an appendage I'm of in. the marvel universe right yeah yeah it absolutely is um so i've been watching that i'm halfway in that and i also just wrapped up season two of invasion on apple tv um which i i like it's a little bit slow at times but it's a good like alien invasion um it's more so a drama than it is like mm -hmm. action at time it it reads like annihilation or arrival um it follows multiple characters from different parts of the world so they're not all okay. like in the same group here um but yeah like one person's story might be a little bit more like the walking dead they are like one of the survivors from all of this stuff one is more like scientific let's study it let's do this so it's a good mix of stuff and the guy who was in john wick four with the dog he's in this oh, yeah. Show. that yeah. guy's good yeah he's one of the main characters so if you want more of nice of him go check him out in invasion but there you go speaking of hitmen have you seen uh the new david fincher movie the killer on oh, netflix I, I still haven't yet <laughs> I, I i know like two weeks ago i was like and i'm gonna watch it this next week and i did not <laughs> I I liked it. It's it's told in these different segments. The titular killer mm. who uh, like the guy in Tenet never gets a name. His, his name's John T. Killer, I guess. John T. He, as, he, <laughs> as he as <laughs> he I didn't think it was that funny. <laughs> John Tenet T. Is Tenet, so is Tenet. <laughs> Tenet is such a serious movie, and I'm just imagining it ending the way The Dark Knight Rises ends, <laughs> yes. where Joseph Gordon Levitt goes to pick up whatever, <laughs> and the lady's like, Oh, you should go by your middle name. That's so pretty. Robin. Robin. What yeah. a nice name. <laughs> I just finally somebody addresses John David Washington, and they're like, Tr Mr. In it, Mr. Tracy in it, and he's like, I don't like it. Call me T. <laughs> okay, Mr. T. Um. <laughs> uh, the killer, as he goes around d doing killer things. So the movie starts with he flubs a job, and okay. then he's on the run from people who are uh, taking consequences against him. And he's trying to find out who, who is it that is after me? How do I go through and like systematically destroy everybody in that chain of command? Mm. And the movie is these like 20 minute segments that are all in different locations across the world. So it moves really well. It's constantly changing settings on you. I feel like it's okay. got a good cool. pace. Every time he needs to order a, a rental car or a plane ticket or something, he uses a sitcom character's name as an alias. So like George Sam Costanza. Malone. Right. Archibald Bunker. Hmm. I, I wished it got very modern. I <laughs> I wished he tried to convince us that his name was like <laughs> Dwight Chandler Sh Bing or something. Right. Dwight Sharut. Sh and they're just like yeah no <laughs> <laughs> yeah like what is the most recent 
sitcom you can get where somebody's like, hey, I know what that name is. Isn't it yeah. so funny you have the same name as that guy? But nobody, nobody catches on the whole time. He lives this very minimal existence. And in the first segment of the movie, he leaves his lookout spot where he's like watching his target. He's on a stakeout. Mm -hmm. uh, he's going to kill this man tonight. And he goes to a McDonald's and he gets like two egg McMuffins. And he throws the McMuffins away and he just smashes the like egg patties and Canadian bacon and American cheese together into a breakfast buck and eats that. Hmm. It's quietly one of the more demented things I've seen on screen this year. Is he gluten free? It's he's just one of those guys who's like all protein all the time. OK, I see. Although I, I wish he <laughs> was gluten free as <laughs> that was his one character quirk. Right. Yeah. <laughs> one thing I didn't know about that is it's supposedly based off a graphic n novel. A French graphic novel. Yeah, which I was not familiar with. And then I happened to see that uh, over the past two weeks. And I was like, huh, OK, there you go. Interesting, interesting, interesting. I watched that. I told you that I went to go see Saltburn. That was our high stakes yeah. Black Friday movie out adventure. I loved Saltburn. It is a wild time. I <laughs> really want to go see it, especially. Please do. That for from you because i've seen so many other people online just be what the fuck did i just watch <laughs> and not and not in a like not in, in the like i just watched te te tenant like what happened that was weird and, mm. and trippy but like a, 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 more like a like a, that, what what movie could I compare it to? I haven't seen it, but like you just get out of a like a like a Bo is a parade, like a like some yes. weird art house film of like what did mm. I just watch? It's a, it's in that vein, yeah. I, the only thing I've heard is there's a scene where they're at the very least talking about licking cum off the off a bathtub drain. Maybe he does it. I don't know, but I'm sold. <laughs> yeah yes yes like that you're Highlight like of pounding your fist like yes <laughs> yes <laughs> this is a movie where i find myself looking at the beginnings of a scenario and i'm like is it going this way is he gonna do this and in my brain i'm chanting do this do this do this almost as a joke and then he literally does that thing on screen <laughs> Melissa's gone full sicko mode with this one. She's I, just like, yes, <laughs> yes. <I'm t> <laughs> Absolutely. My face is pressed against the glass, my whole body. Uh, I also last night I went to see Napoleon. I went to see it on the Alamo Drafthouse okay. big screen. I wanted to make sure I got that in before yeah. bigger stars like Godzilla and Beyonce have movies hitting theaters this weekend. <laughs> I, Napoleon is half romantic drama and half war movie. And okay. I appreciate the scale of the war movie, but that's not really my genre. Sure. So every time Vanessa Kirby's not on screen, I'm like, when do I get to see Vanessa Kirby again? Understandable. This movie is worth seeing for all of the weird foreplay noises that Joaquin <laughs> Phoenix makes. There's a scene where he goes into Vanessa Kirby's room and he does this noise that's partially like all, like a dog whining, but also like a car starting up. <laughs> what? I know. It's <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to think of what sound that would make. Like that's that? not far off. That's not far off oh from it. Oh my god, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> this movie is going to make an incredible Napoleon out of context YouTube video in a couple months. <laughs> oh and no. speaking of Bo is speaking of Bo is afraid. I love that this year has given us Joaquin Phoenix must have sex and Joaquin Phoenix must not have sex. <laughs> <laughs> the two ends of the spectrum. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh lord, that's interesting. God. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I like I've been on the fence with that one because like I, I I think it'd be really neat to see on the big screen just because mm-hmm. of all the set pieces. It looks beautiful. Um, Vanessa Kirby looks like she is fantastic in that. Yes. Um, but also, I just I don't really care for Napoleon or learning any more about him <laughs> or like, uh-huh. I don't know, like it, it also feels like it's trying to be like what a cool fucking guy napoleon was like rebel tyrant like leader general he, idiot short I think, man i don't know it feels like it, it's almost trying hard to make him like i, I know it is about his like rise and fall and that's his whole st- story right but like i don't know there's just something about the trailers I, that have been like i think that is largely the trailers i don't know if that's as necessarily the attitude of the movie as a whole i'd say if you're going to see something in theaters go see salt burn that's a fascinating movie just to if you go see napoleon you're gonna have an idea of who is with you seeing napoleon like mostly dads sure i go to see salt burn and look around at who who the rest of those freaks are (laughs) Speaking of when we went to go see the holdovers a couple weeks oh, ago. Oh yes, yes. We had to have been the youngest people in the oh, theater. Us too. Yeah. It was it was all like older f- families. It was like the grandparents and the parents and like the, the kids must have been like next door seeing something else or who knows what. It was all the wine moms. Uh but that movie was awesome it was so funny uh i <laughs> uh, d- did not expect it to be as funny as it was but it's also it just it's a heartwarming film it's a good like mm-hmm. good holiday heartwarming yes. but also sad movie in a strange w- way too it's like bittersweet but not s- it's it's not sweet but it's right like it's it's comedic it's a good t- time but it's it's yeah it's good I what a tremendous film. It's so immersive. This is what the phrase instant classic was made for is the holdovers. Like as it is happening in front of your eyes, you're like, I'm going to watch this every Christmas. This yeah. is the, my future. Yep. Good holiday movie. Indeed. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, something that's not a good holiday movie i did watch good burger 2 on paramount plus any day is a good day to watch good burger 2 <laughs> any time of year it, it, there's How nothing remark it i enjoyed it there's nothing really remarkable about it but it does feel like it sincerely loves the original good burger there are a lot of specific callbacks in it yeah uh I really appreciated that. Like a lot of the set pieces are repeated. Some of the characters return. Connie Muldoon is there. So happy to see her. Now, I, I know your number one question was Sinbad. Does Sinbad make a return? I think he is a voice cameo in it. This thing, mm. it is weirdly chock full of odd celebrity cameos and product placement. Like, for no good reason, these characters are holding to finance massive, the movie. massive yeah. bags of Doritos in this scene. Yeah. They're not even eating them. Just like big <laughs> nacho cheese Doritos right in your face. Yeah. Interesting. OK. Yeah, I've, I've been looking forward to how it was not expecting it to be much more than like, hey, you remember Good Burger? What if we like kind of did the same thing, but in like a newer time period yeah we, th- there's, there's what, kids what in it expecting. now yeah. <laughs> which is my, my my struggle with every return to a 90s movie is that they put like a 15 year old in it yeah but and i'm they, like, a fif- like they were also 15 years old at the time they were making the original one right like it was supposed Something- to be like their high school Something I realized looking back on the movies that were my favorite movies when I was a little kid was that I did not need to see other little kids. 
I <laughs> loved movies about adults doing adult things. <laughs> I had to go down the list se- like several iterations before I got to a movie that was actually about kids my own age. And I'm like, you don't, I, I, I would love to foster new stars. I think that is important. But also, you don't got to put kids in a kid's movie to get the kids to see it. Sure. Interesting. Now I'm wondering if even the ones that did have k- kids in them was like, what if kid did adult thing? Like they are now. That's what I loved. That's what I loved. My favorite Disney Channel original movie was Phantom of the Megaplex. Sure. Because it's about Uh a 16 year old who's like the manager of a 25 screen theater. (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. Good. I'm I'm, I'm glad that it it, it was at least like it was what you you expect. Yeah. It's it's heartwarming. There is some very fun like set design when you go to Ed's burger themed house and all of his burger Amazing. children. There's a great gag where he's like, <laughs> all of these kids come out. Burger he's like, children. <laughs> by th- by that. <laughs> Is this another <laughs> movie with <laughs> weird foreplay <laughs> noises that I don't want to know look about? On your face. I mean, he's got a bunch of little hymns oh. that are dressed exactly like him, and he lives in a burger house. So, like, he just, they're just exact copies of him. You meet his wife. His wife's name is Edie. Like, it's just Ed, the, the girl name of Ed. She looks oh, no. exactly like him. She's wearing the same clothes. Like, everybody's wearing the little Good Burger uniform, and his kids are named um, Ed, too. Like, yep. mustard, ketchup, pickles, no mayo. <laughs> and then they've got a little baby named Little Bon Bon. <laughs> Good. Little Bon Bon. All wearing a Good Burger uniform. It is really precious. I do Shout love that as a new bun family bun. costume. Big ups to little bun, but they're all wearing those the wig. They all yeah. have the cow oh, no. hair. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Good stuff. And then it looks like also on your list you have a classic. Yes. Hot yes. Rod. I had this had been on my list for a long time, ever since I was brand new to college. Like freshmen, maybe it's still welcome week and classes haven't even started yet. There was like some girl I met at some welcome week event. And like we weren't friends, Mm -hmm. but we weren't not. We're like, are we friends? I just got here. I need to be friends with somebody. And she's like, I'll I'll drive you around. You know, one of those like welcome week, big air quotes friendships you have before you settle into college. And she took me to some house party. And when I say house party, it conjures up images like in the film House Party starring Kid and Play. No, it's these were kids who were in, if not literally a church group, something akin to a church group. It was a good, clean church group type fun time. And there was one group of girls who all went into one room and watched Mean Girls. And there was... All the guys went in the room next door and they all watched Hot Rod. I have literally I w- been in that exact same scenario. Exa- <laughs> and I'm watching Mean Girls. I'm having a fine time, but I can eat. The Hot Rod boys yeah, are having a up. much better time. They are <laughs> LMFAO in the parlance of 2009. Yeah. And I'm like, why aren't I over there? I want to watch Hot Rod. <laughs> And finally, this year, I did it. This was Thanksgiving for Thanksgiving. My roommate and I made a can of Pillsbury cinnamon rolls and we watched Hot Rod. Hell yeah. That sounds like a great time. It it was very worthwhile. Uh, Hot Rod was a wonderful time. It's so good. It's so dumb. And it like it it fits in so well with all of like. The, those comedies of that time mm. from like Mean Girls to Napoleon Dynamite and Nacho yes. Libre and even some more of the like raunchier uh, w- ones that are are out there. And I feel like it was one of the ones that went like under appreciate like every like everyone mm. obviously really liked it, but it was not the one that everyone talked about. They, they all yeah. like went on to something else. 
uh but yeah I, I i just have i have such fond memories of that movie it is endlessly cool qu- 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 yes. quotable never sneak up on a man who's been in a chemical fire <laughs> 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 perfect use of an ian mcshane right yeah absolutely <laughs> you get your have money's you, worth you, with ian mcshane every time have you seen my dead dad he's super dead <laughs> <laughs> my favorite part is when he, they're doing the test where they hold him underwater yeah. but before they're danny mcbride is filling up this inflatable pool with the hose it's like the beginning of the scene. It's just this real quiet bit before we get into the actual action. He's filling it up with the hose and he just says, pool's great for holding water. <laughs> that and that and the one where he's <laughs> doing the high, the high fives on the both of them. <laughs> this movie is expertly. And that's how you do it. <laughs> It's expertly edited. The number of times it just cut into his friends doing something buck wild for no good reason. I've been hopped up on green tea all day. <laughs> <laughs> so every time it cuts to them dancing in the parking lot. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> it's such a great movie. I'm glad you finally got to watch it. <laughs> Extremely worthwhile. Mm-hmm. pass it on absolutely. to your family absolutely indeed good stuff uh well with that i say we take a quick uh break for housekeeping we've already been talking for quite a while uh when we come back we have a few more uh things to talk about like yuki Sonoda's fast and furious day in formula one uh and and uh quick marvel news things and spotify rap stuff uh, all of that stuff so we will be right back here at the whatnots we make multiple different shows and a lot of hard work goes into making them so we would love it if you check them all out if you enjoy our shows patreon.com slash the whatnots is the best place to show your support for just a dollar a month you can get early access to episodes and at our three dollar tier a patreon exclusive podcast the pilots club You can even get a shout out and thank you on most of our shows at the $5 tier. And if you're one of our patrons already, thank you so much. It means the world to us. You can find out more information on our website, thewhatnots.com, as well as your favorite podcasting platform of choice. When you type in The Whatnots, all of our shows will pop up right there. Just don't forget to give us a nice rating and review if you like the shows. You can also find us on YouTube and Twitch for video versions of the shows, trailer reactions, and live streams. And lastly, we have merch. If you want to grab yourself a shirt or a hoodie or a mug or something else, head over to thewhatnots.com slash store to pick up some merch today. All right, we are back. Once again, a big shout out to our Patreon supporters. We love you a lot. It means thank a you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Over on our Pilots Club, uh, in the month of November, we talked about Manifest. Uh, so go check out our conversation on that that one. Uh, but for December, uh, we are t- talking about Unicorn Warriors Eternal, uh, the pilot of that show. That's Gendy Tartakovsky's newest cartoon. Uh, if you are an animation nerd, I think this is one to check out. Uh, you should absolutely go watch it if you have not already. But yeah, all sorts of different styles from old Disney to old anime to like classic Cartoon Network stuff uh, that that's mixed in like in the style of this show. Um, So uh, we are excited to talk about that one. Be on the lookout for that right here on the captain's log this past week. Melissa, you are finally free from the burden of Hannibal. Uh, you finally finished watching that one. We caught up on a bunch of uh, other TV shows and movies that we had been watching recently. Um, so go check out all of that. Over on the review show, uh, we got to conclude our coverage of Hellboy. Uh, we read volumes 10 through 12, got our last little bits of their little one-off side stories, and then the conclusion to his kind of overarching story in that. Um, So it was good. I finally got to read some Hellboy comics. I miss Um, him already. 
Right. He's like, it, 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 he's just comfort food. Like, even when I mm-hmm. hadn't read his books, I, I just knew it's like he's he's just comfort food. That's really what, what he is. Um, but but yeah, we had a blast t- talking about Hellboy. Uh, and then last but not least, uh, the reactor core. We have our spoiler cast to the end of Loki season two, as well as the Marvel's. Uh, and I guess if you haven't seen Good Burger 2 yet, we also had a trailer reaction to Good Burger 2. So go go check that out. Um, also, I, I, I did. I, I don't think I, 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 I just have to give one more shout out to our episode on Velocipastor. It was so f- <laughs> fun. It seems to be doing well on ye- YouTube as well nice. so thanks for checking it out we appreciate it um but yeah i think that's about it for housekeeping besides the fact that coming up uh in a couple weeks here we will be shutting down for the holidays uh so yeah in in like the middle of december uh will be the whatnots grand prix the eighth annual grand prix i we're, we we've renamed it to a yeah. grand <laughs> I, I should say it was our like end of the year <laughs> anniversary retrospective, uh, but we are officially rebranding it to uh, the whatnots eighth GP. <laughs> Who knows what a Grand Prix is and isn't? We say that this is a Grand Prix now. I right? was sitting around eating pizza, talking about our podcasts the past year. Not a regular pre, not a like a, a great pre, Big. a Grand Prix right large indeed indeed uh something else to keep an eye out for next week is our rotten tomatoes movie predictions game yeah i'm excited for that i've already but, got them listed out good stuff good stuff uh speaking of grand prix though uh formula one the season is done the final race of the season happened in abu dhabi Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, but I, I I just have to mention this specific thing because it leads me to a question. So <laughs> uh, there is a driver. His name is Yuki Sanoda. He is f- he is from Japan, but he races for Alpha Tori, uh, which is the like secondary team owned by Red Bull kind of their like development team to like bring okay drivers up um and get them a little more experience um and he he's been in formula one for a few seasons now and everything you've seen of him on the netflix show drive to survive is that he like hates working out. He likes fart jokes. He's he's just he's just a typical guy, you know, like I want to exercise. I just want to play video games and drive real fast. Uh, and in the in this final race, it just so happens that for a, a handful of laps, he was le- leading the race, which is something you don't really see from from him. <coughs> Usually he's not qualified high enough to be kind of in the front of the race. He's Mm. usually kind of farther back and then at best, maybe fighting for like ninth place. Um, And and so like to see him lead the race was just like, oh, my God, Yuki Sonoda. Amazing. Good for you. Hell yeah. Uh, It turns out. The same weekend. One of the celebrities at the race was Jason Statham. Ah, one of 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 course we all know that he is one of the cast members of the Fast and the and the Furious. So, is it a coincidence that Yuki led the race for a couple laps the same weekend he meets Jason Statham? No, I think not. That is the spirit of the Fast and the Furious. So, Melissa. <laughs> what? So, hold on. Are you okay, saying okay. <laughs> that the spirit, like Paul Walker's ghost, went to one driver on this week that mm. Jason Statham was going Amen. to be at the race? 
<laughs> I had to with praise to Paul <laughs> up in heaven. Yeah. I, <laughs> it's not a corona, and, but I'll drink t- to that. <laughs> I, I went to one driver the week Jason Satham was going to be there and was like, you will lead. You will be fast. <laughs> you will be furious. He will see you. Yes. Yeah. Ab- absolutely. That's what happened. I feel like. Huh. <laughs> But that leads me to my question. Melissa, if you met any if 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 you met one cast member from the Fast and the Furious, oh. <laughs> which one would inspire you to drive the fastest? Oh man. Uh being a Lost fan, I do have a <laughs> long-time emotional attachment to Michelle Rodriguez. Sure, yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. My partner's a- a- answer, like it, her, her first one was immediately Roman. Of course, Roman. Oh, like, yes. Let's just get up to no good, right? Um, my first thought was, well, of course, Han. He's such a cool guy. And he has snacks, oh, right? Like, hey, can, right. can I have some, right? Dreamboat. Uh, but I, I think at the end of the day, the real answer is if i met dom toretto and he handed me a corona oh boy i'd be gone <laughs> Dr- you could do anything down, right? he believes because yeah. once he gives you the corona you're in the family and he will die yes. for you yeah, if he that, hands that anybody a corona sacrament right the, right. the, <laughs> it is the, the holy if right he, <laughs> if you're just the the meter man and you're coming by to like check the electricity meter on the house or whatever while they're doing a barbecue and he hands you a corona yeah. he now owes you a life debt and you can call right. upon tom toretto at any time <laughs> dom i need your help <laughs> i'm on my way <laughs> i i wish fast and furious had the room for a movie where dom is trying to convince the rest of the crew to do something wild for somebody who's he says is part of the family and everybody else is like, we don't know that person. <laughs> what was that? There was the, there was the cartoon, right? And it's all about his like second cousin twice no, removed, I, right? I feel, I feel like if it is literal family, then maybe they'd agree. But if it's like, this was Mia's sixth grade teacher, like nobody but Mia is on that crew with him. Right. Tesh yeah. and Roman are not getting if, involved if that. in that. They're like, yeah. right. <laughs> it's like, no, he gave me a C. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> no. Yeah. So that that was that, that was just my f- f- fun, dumb co- question with nice. That. Um, but along the lines of sports and stuff like that, Melissa, I have a challenge for you. For me. Yes, for you. I love a challenge. The football challenge. Melissa, you have said uh, once or twice here on the show that you are slowly but surely learning football. Learning the rules, how to understand it, how how to watch it. I don't think I've retained anything I've tried to learn, but when it's on, I will turn to somebody and I'll be like, can you tell me what's happening here? And like within that five minute window, I kind of know, but like, OK, I don't remember it for later gotcha. very well. Well, Melissa, I'm challenging you on whatever ep- episode of the captain's log falls closest to the Super Bowl. Oh, I want you to explain football to, to me because I know okay. I, I, I know how to okay. watch and follow football. So I I want to hear your version. What have you retained? I act act like I don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> Ball is shaped like an egg, but pointy. It's got okay. bumps. <laughs> they <laughs> you, call it the, the old boys, pig skin. <laughs> boys kick the bump ball <laughs> into a big fork. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so that yeah, that that is my ch- challenge. Okay. It is the 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 Super Bowl challenge. Uh, so, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll keep that in mind. And as we get closer, I'll remind you once again. Um, but yeah, that's it on on that stuff. Um, 
Uh, uh, Spotify Wrapped was out today. I do. Did 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 yes. you look at yours? Mine is I'll, bad as usual. I always do. I well, your yours is bad only that it reflects the music that you listen to while you're asleep when you're not really listening to it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it it gets it gets skewed in that way it's like it never really shows my favorite artists or my mm. favorite albums or stuff like that because yeah i have that sleep playlist um that's just on all night going and going uh, and going uh for another year i think four out of the past five years including this one my top artist has been hosier mm -hmm. i'm in the top one percent of hosier listeners across go. the world good stuff good stuff the top artists were him they might be giants django django you know, florence and the machine glass animals but you might not be as familiar but of course with the rise of stuff like only hands and stuff like that the there's accounts that will pop 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 but they're like percentage like i'm in the top three per 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 percent on only fans which means that they get like the most customers and and stuff like mm. that uh so now you can put i'm in the top one per 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 percent of hosier listeners <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah don't have a date to bring to thanksgiving dinner with the family i just have this fact to read about myself <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> uh and my top songs included Sweet Talkin' Woman by Electric Light Orchestra, This Is The Day by The The, which was one of the songs in the Guardians 3 soundtrack, Hail Bop by Django Django, Alive and Kicking by Simple Minds, and Livin' Thing, also by Electric Light Orchestra. It's been a big ELO year, I guess. ELO. ELO. It's a, I was assigned a class and it says I am an alchemist. Mm. Listening is your laboratory. You create your own playlists more than other listeners do. There you go. Mine was the collector. Uh, it said, my taste was impeccable. Uh, and Ooh. I mostly listen to my own playlists because they're already perfect. Okay. That was it. That's all I re re remember. I'm also there's only one podcast I listen to on Spotify because I already had a pre-existing podcast environment before Spotify even started it. Mm -hmm. But I, do, I am apparently in the top three percent of listeners to you must remember this. My one Spotify okay. exclusive in the rotation. Yo, I go. wanted to ask if you've checked out any of the audiobooks on Spotify that they've added. Not really. I tried to, uh, but they weren't free. Uh, so They're free I, now. Are they? Or I are think certain, it's like certain ones are. I think you get like 15 free hours of audiobook a month. Uh, okay. And then I don't know what you need to do if you want to listen to more than 15. I didn't because I just started yesterday. Because okay. I'm like, hey, it's almost the end of the month. Can I fit in an audio book in the sure. next three days and use my hours? Yeah, I, I, I remember when they first put them on and I was interested. I was like, oh, that's kind of neat because there were some books that at one point I had like written down to be like, I could, you know, maybe do the 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 Thrawn <laughs> trilogy for Star Wars yeah. or find some old detective novel uh, that I, I, I might like. Um, and yeah, I tried to look up a couple and I had to purchase them. Mm -hmm. um, and I get it. But yeah, like I'm glad they've that at least might now be doing that. You get a certain amount of hours each month or something like that to check it out. Um, because I I was like, I'm already paying for pr premium. I don't get like a free mm. one every so often. Like that seems kind of weird. I, now you do. You will. You get 15 hours. So depending right, on yeah. what you're listening to, that could be several audiobooks, or you only make it like two thirds of the way through a meaty one. And then you have to wait yeah. until next month. Does does the 15 hours speed up if you listen to it at like times <clears throat> one point five? speed 
I don't know. I was also curious, like if I get distracted at work and I just rewinded a bunch, is that adding to my hours? Oh, right. Yeah. I or don't is it like I don't know. Furthest progression. That makes it. I'm thing. I'm like seven hours into a 10 hour book. So I'll wrap up tomorrow before the month is over and I'll report back with more findings in the future. OK, OK, I. They did find the book I was look. They did have the book I was looking for, which was not an especially prominent one. So I was happy they had the range to give it to me, cool. which is a Stephen King book. Well, actually, it was one of the books he wrote under his Richard Bachman pen name, but mm-hmm. now now it's a Stephen King. It's a book called The Long Walk. Hmm. I haven't heard, heard, haven't heard of that one. I hadn't heard of it either until I started listening to the Stephen King podcast and learning more about his his entire portfolio or having more context attached to stories that maybe I'd only heard the name of. Like the long walk doesn't tell you very much about what it is Mm -hmm. and what it is, is in this sort of kind of dystopian police state semi future. There is an event called The Long Walk where 100 teenage boys volunteer to walk. (laughs) They they start in Maine. Okay. As they would, of course, of this being a Stephen King story. And they just walk. You have to walk. If you drop below, if you stop or if you drop below four miles an hour in speed, You get a warning because you're being followed by like a tank with soldiers on it. And Hmm. if you get three warnings and then you're still falling behind or stopping or whatever, they will shoot you. Wild. (laughs) So like these boys are walking to their death. Only one person can win. Like the last boy walking gets this incredible cash prize and like seemingly anything they can wish for like they can get the cash prize and also demand one other thing as their prize whatever it might be uh and so it's 99 of these boys will die doing this thing and it's just like you walk as long as you can like i said it starts in maine uh the when i'm listening the boys have been at it for almost two days they're still in maine maine's really big and they're just walking (laughs) And it's like I think the in the past long walk events because there's like lore in it where the boys sure. are like I heard on this one long walk that this boy did this seems like they don't really make it farther than New Hampshire like theoretically you you just walk and walk and walk forever but it's like your body will give out after like four days or whatever I don't know yeah because I'm it's assuming fast. they don't like allow them to stop to like sleep or anything like that. It's no, just like, no, no, you no, start, you have no, to go. you don't. I just got past this part in the book where our lead boy is like, I have to poop. And there's like, <laughs> <laughs> there's people Riveting. watching you. There's people watching you. It's like a public event. Like every, there, there will be folks who like crowd along the sides of the route with like big signs yeah. cheering on the long walk boys. And they're like, they could be there at any time. It's not like there's only select spots that are for spectators. The any, slow like, the there, could any, there could be any farmer just sitting on the edge of his property watching these boys stumble along a road. So late boys like. I have to poop and I just have to let all these people watch me poop while I like just sort of like crouch and waddle. Wiggle it out. (laughs) Right. Exactly. (laughs) So there's all sorts of fascinating like logistical hurdles for them to get through. I was when I heard about this, I was really entranced by the simplicity of the premise. Like you remember earlier this year when I went to see that movie Inside that's just Willem Dafoe trapped inside an apartment yep. this is the same yep. oh, d- d- it goes back to my love of the wages of fear and sorcerer like what do you mean the guy just has to do the one thing that's all <laughs> yeah. the premise is one thing the boys just walk <laughs> like you could almost like it's one of those things when you first mention it you could 
think it could go in all sorts of different directions. Like, how do you escape this walk? Can you like hide? You in don't. A cra- right. Like uh, no. that. Or is it like, is it some kind of like political commentary on the death march that happened? Or Not like, really. When we like relocated a bunch of Native American, like, it, but no, it's it just like, no, they walk. Yeah. That's yeah. It. I. I had been curious about this, but I started listening to it yesterday, not just to use my Spotify hours before the end of the month, but I heard a news item that the director of this new Hunger Games movie, mm-hmm. which I've heard is actually pretty solid, uh, is going to direct an adaptation of The Long Walk. And the movie co- podcast was like, do you think he directed a Hunger Games movie to get him into the space where he could direct The Long Walk? Because it is sort of Hunger Games adjacent. In that I, it is, I feel teens like it would in a deadly be game. The other way around, like prove you can do something so ridiculous as the long walk and take that seriously, and then we'll give you the block b- 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 buster hit franchise. I well, the thing about the long walk is that it's a long walk. It's not. Right. It's, it's not super cinematic. So I've heard exactly yeah. mentioned mentioned on the King cast that a lot of people have wanted to do the long walk and it's never gotten off the ground. It's like, how, right. How do you film this? How do you make this into an exciting movie? And I guess this guy, I'll, I'll look up his name later. Mr. Ballad He's of like, Songbirds. Me, and I'll take the first step. <laughs> right. He's like, I did well enough on, on this teen death game that the people watch let me do the 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 less exciting one that's just boys walking it's so funny to me that it is exclusively teenage boys yeah they're so (laughs) you've heard of maze runner now (laughs) now look out for straight walker (laughs) exactly and there's the boys are just so immature and stupid and horny like there are several times and this is also, I think one of the first things Stephen King ever wrote, and he like didn't get it published until years later when he had his Richard Bachman <clears throat> pen name. So it it reads r- as a younger writer. I mean, I don't think he's in like high school, but like it's like this girl's on the side of the road holding up a sign like "Go Ray, Main Zone, Main Pride." I hope you make it. And the boy's just like looking at her like yoing, and he goes over there and he kisses her and he gets like one of the warnings for stopping. So he's like taking his life into his own hands, stopping to like make out yeah. with this girl and touch her butt. And Please then like life. the entire rest of the walk, he's ways, like, right? he's like, remember when I touch that butt and then I'll get a boner and he has to keep walking with a boner. There's so many boners in this long walk. <laughs> I presume the movie will have fewer boners. <laughs> and he has to like figure out how to walk with no one looking, hold it down. I don't know. Right? But no, that also, happens. That that's they're taking a shit. So I don't that's know. Tru- like, <laughs> that's truly part of it. These wild, wild boys just walking, just walking through rural Maine. God, that it it feels like maybe even a comments like on puberty on like boys going through just t- trying to figure out what to do and they're all just so dumb and awkward like what do you do like how, how, what but how do i walk around with a boner i don't uh, they'll all notice i don't know what what, and what then happened you, then you have to walk across maine with a tank following after you right yeah oh it's if you've ever wondered what if a hundred boys walked across Maine and if they didn't walk across Maine, they'd die? Something I've <laughs> always wondered myself. You can go to your own Spotify premium and listen to the audiobook of The Long Walk. I'm I'm happy it's here. I'm trying to learn a little bit more about King. I see, can see myself listening to more Kings. Okay. Okay. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh well. Let's see. Last but not least, I will end the podcast on this uh, a little bit more Marvel news. Michael Waldron, the creator of the Loki television show, uh, is now set to write Avengers King Dynasty. Or at, at least we'll take a crack at the script here. Um, so I think that's a good move. I think that's a good choice. Sure. 
Um, I think yeah, he was already. Him. I did hear that he was already supposed to direct to to write um, Secret Wars. So it's like, oh, it makes yes. sense that he just also write part one of that. Yeah. So uh, good for him. I think he he mm. deserves it, especially with how well Loki <clears throat> has been doing. Uh, so and yeah. I I personally loved Multiverse of Madness. Did, did he write that one, too? I Yes. Oh, in, interesting. Yeah, I it, it Multiverse of Madness is one of those weird things of of like, yes, no one liked that uh, Wanda was the bad guy and that they did all this horrible stuff to her. No one liked that, but that's what Wanda Vision set up for us. So with what he did, he did a great job. It, it, it was just. I, yeah, yeah I, there <laughs> are there are some steps missing between where WandaVision ends and Multiverse of Madness begins, but I don't know if that's that might be more of an administrative oversight and not yeah. a fault of this guy's script. That I, and that I think movie's so got, many people missed the fact that Wanda was also the bad guy in WandaVision. They were like, oh, but she's like the main she's the hero and she saved the day. Yeah, it's like, no, she also didn't apologize to anyone that she should have apologized to in that and then no one really caught on to all of that and she didn't learn a thing <laughs> this one up in the woods but... with a scary book this is what happens yeah. when you go into the woods alone with a scary book and not just like a, a nice normal eat pray love or even a long walk i was gonna say she had, like that book dark hold move over <laughs> next up long walk <laughs> <laughs> That's what really turned her evil. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, cool. Well, let's end the podcast right there. Uh, Melissa, where can the people find you on the Internet? I have a letterbox still in the process of adding things to it. It's pretty new. You can follow me at WilkyWit. That's W-I-L-K-Y-W-I-T. There you go. Uh, and you guys can find me at Yo Kyle Springer on most social media places. And if you'd like to stay up to date with all of the stuff that we do here at The Whatnots, we are at The Whatnots on most of the social medias. Uh, but yeah, please go like, share and subscribe. You guys know the deal with all of that. If you're watching this on YouTube, go check out some more of our videos right over there. That would help us out a ton. And yeah, this has been uh, number 260 of the Whatnots Captain's Log. We will see you all next time. Bye. Bye.